on the show. He is the head coach of the Men and Cardinals. Kind enough to give us some time tonight. His name is Matt Gray. Coach Gray, how you doing? I'm great, guys. How about yourselves? Appreciate you guys having me on. Oh no, 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 no question, man. We uh, we definitely had, had to had to get you in here, man. Um, so let's let's get right into it because um, you know, we we talked briefly after your, your game against McKinley, um, and um, you know, I, I just wanted to, another question. I wanted to ask you. We had asked you a couple questions after the game, but I wanted to ask you. Um, you you had some some pretty big shoes to fill there at, at Minard, to say the least. Um, what was the, the biggest challenge in you taking over there for, for a coach as legendary as Coach Trevisano? You know, it's – I don't view it as like a challenge or that type of deal or, or kind of a detriment. I, I think it most importantly is, is, number one, this is a program that has extremely high expectations, has has great community and administrative support, and and was very fortunate to be on staff at Mentor um, since 2012 and, and really – from about 2017 on, Coach Triv was really kind of grooming me um, to be able to, to become a head coach and be the head coach at Mentor and just extremely fortunate to be able to see all the different pieces of the puzzle that go into it in terms of booster club, youth, middle school programs, being able to to work all those different angles so that you can be able to have a, a program that is connected truly from the bottom all the way to the top. So it was one of those things I, I view it as very fortunate and very, um, it was a huge privilege to be able to, to serve as an assistant and learn from him and, and be able to see it firsthand just because it was, there's so many moving pieces and parts. And I think someone that possibly would come from the outside just wouldn't truly understand of of all the different factors that kind of go into um, being the head coach at, at a big division one school like Manor and, and just being able to see firsthand coach Triv on a day-to-day basis was was huge and and to me it, it's it's great because I'm a very competitive person and, and there's expectations for championships and, and greatness every single day so that, that to me was really exciting and intriguing about this opportunity. What, what's the best thing you learned from, from coach Triv in your time there as an assistant? I think number one is you got to try to be as consistent as, as possible and, and knowing that it, it's truly a people business. It, it's one of those type of deals where you have to handle different coaches, different players, different administrators and teachers and everybody that that ties into the program. You got to have your standard of, of what needs to be done and how it needs to be done, but you got to really be able to, to hold – everyone to that standard but you have to treat it and, and handle different situations different ways you can't just go one way with it so just seeing that uniqueness and, and being able to to see that on that day-to-day basis all right what is rule number one for anyone that wants to play for you at minute what's what's rule number one you know i i think number one is is we challenge our kids all the time be the best version of yourself every single day and that's in the classroom in the weight room on the practice field on the football field be the best version of yourself each and every single day and that kind of it's it's a wide range it's fully encompassing type of deal um but it, it's something that our kids are awesome they, they work extremely hard but they know and understand what the expectations are in terms of being on time, doing things the right way in the classroom, outside the classroom, in the community, at football, all of those expectations. So I think the starting point for our, our program is, is to be that best version of yourself every single day. Matt Gray, the head coach of the Minnesota Cardinals, is our guest. All right, so you guys are, are four and three um, with two games remaining, I believe. Uh, yep. I want to say Strongsville and Euclid. Yes. Um, what's going to be the key to you guys uh, finishing this season strong? You know, I, I think I, I like where we're at and where we're progressing. I think number one is is we're playing hard right now. We're we're playing extremely hard, and that gives us a chance to be able to to win and, and play at a high level. And we're going to continue to work and, and be more consistent and correct a lot of the mistakes that we're seeing on on Friday nights. But I think we're a much more complete and better football team than we were at the beginning of the season as we continue to progress. And that's something that is always your challenge. You want to be starting to peak and, and play better and play at a higher level 
towards the end of the season heading into the playoffs than you do at the beginning of the season. I think that's something that we, we firmly believe that we are, and we got to continue to attack practice and, and be able to get better every single day. But that's that, to me, is going to be the key, is just being able to, to be as consistent as possible and, and practice it the right way and just keep playing hard because then some of those mistakes that we made at Medina, we made this past week against Solon, those are going to be, be able to get corrected with great effort, great focus, great execution. What are some of the things that, that you and your staff um, do to try to make sure that players are performing as well in the classroom as they are uh, on the field? You know, I, I'm very fortunate to have a great uh, assistant coaching staff with our JV and varsity program. We have we have nine assistant coaches that are part of our program and, and we give them tremendous and they take tremendous ownership of each of their position groups and they're monitoring their kids grades all throughout. And I kind of do it from overarching the entire program aspect of it, of monitoring grades. I'm able to get into our grade book system and look at attendance, look at grades and behavior. And, and that kind of stems from some of the relationships you have with the administration and making sure they're acting the right way. But I, I really, um, it's a credit to our assistant coaches because they, they do a great job of, of getting the bond and the connections with the kids and, and be able to have that relationship. And, and they're the ones that are teaching the schemes and the techniques on a day-to-day -day basis. And they have that, that ability to, to go through and make sure they're doing the right things on the field, off the field, in the classroom, all those different areas. So it's, it's really a testament to the assistant coaches. I'm going to stop the interview for a second. Uh, breaking news, your Philadelphia Eagles are now 5-0. and Sorry. Okay. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like it. <laughs> so um, you are also an intervention specialist. Um, my wife is an intervention specialist, so I awesome. know um, the, the – uh, I don't want to say challenges, but I, I know, you know, what goes into some of the things you have to do as – and intervention specialist. Is there anything that you can take from that role and, and apply to, to coaching as well? Absolutely. And, and because you, you get to be able to see a very dynamic group of, of students throughout and, and be able to see that students and teenagers and really anybody really learns in different ways, whether it's someone's a visual learner, auditory and so forth, and being able to tie in different things, what we teach in football in, in terms of on the board and our schemes and so forth with it. And we're able to do that. And, and one of the things that we kind of do with, with our run game and some of our play action stuff, it's all broken down by families by the first letter. So that's kind of, that kind of came from that special ed background and, and, and being able to get that aspect, but it's just trying to, and coaching is teaching aspect of it and, and being able to to really meet the the unique needs of all of our kids. And, and we try to go through with our scouting reports of just have the visual of it, but not just have the visual clip of it, but be able to put some of the video and, and see it so the guys can see it both um, visually and be able to see it on paper, all those type of aspects of it. So there's, there's definitely a correlation and tie together um, between being an intervention specialist and, and being able to, to coach because it's such a, you're not going to have the same type of kid that, that learns the same way, that has the same attention span and so forth with it. And that's, to me, they, they tie hand in hand together. Now um, you, I also, uh, in, doing, in doing my research, um, you, not long before you got the job, uh, the head coaching job, I should say, at Mentor, you also got married. Um, yep. Now. You've done your research. That's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to do a little something, something, right? There you go. Um, I like it. <laughs> now I'm I, next month. I'll, I'll be 19 years in. Uh, okay. to, it's like it's a jail sentence. I got 19 years in. I'll be, I'll be 19 years. What has been the most eye opening thing for you about marriage so far? You know, it, it's it, it's it's been a it, it's been a crazy ride, but it's been awesome. Of just mm -hmm. going through. We got married in December of 2019, and then was it I think nine days after our wedding, I got the job and, and being able to to go through, and then right when. We get we we delayed our honeymoon to get to to March for our spring break. We didn't want to rush it over Christmas break and that. So right as we were ready to go, it, it was um, ready to go to Mexico for our honeymoon on the Thursday, the twelfth. We get shut down with COVID and and all that. And just it's funny because my wife, because I say it all the time, and then the inside of our of my wedding ring, it's it's winners adjust and adjusters win. And it's one of those type of deals where it's like, man, I almost regret getting that put because it just seems like ever since that day, it's just been a oh. a wild crazy ride and just something new every single day having to adapt and adjust to this crazy world that we're in right now but it, it's been it's been a great ride and, and 
we were fortunate enough that first year as head coach. Um, it was actually the day before the regional championship against Medina. We had a little girl, Peyton. Um, she was born that Thursday morning. Um, nice. So it was we, – we, we threw a lot in there in that first year. So it was um, – it's been a, a, a crazy fun ride, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Coach, they, they, they don't they don't forget anything. They being wise. They, they don't <laughs> – Oh, absolutely. They I, I knew nothing. I had a good one here, though, because it was the – when that week, so the regional championship week against Medina, um, mm-hmm. we're going through and, and Peyton's born about 2.30 in the morning that Thursday and, and everything went great. Mom and baby are, are happy and healthy and everything. About 12.30, 1 o'clock, Sarah looks at me and she's like, you have a football team and a walkthrough to go through. You got to go win a regional championship. So she nice. kicked me out of the hospital that Thursday. Nice. She's like, now you're back Thursday night and you're spending the night here. And then Friday afternoon, she kicked me back out again. I was like, okay, she's, she, she's definitely a, a, a tremendous wife that gets the craziness of being a football coach's wife, because it, it takes a very special woman for that. And, and she makes a ton of sacrifices to make our family yes. work, but it's, it is a, um, it's a great relationship. And there's, she's, she's kind of my soundboard on a lot of things and just being able to be there and that support and that help is, is second to none. This is great. Salute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Gray, head coach of the Men and Cardinals is our guest. Um, can, can you talk about the, the, the importance of, of cohesion on, on a coaching staff and, and, and how important that is uh, for, for you guys week to week? Absolutely. It's huge. Like I said, I, I was very fortunate um, to, when I took over, we, we did not lose any coaches on that coaching staff. So I was able to add um, one coach um, to kind of replace my one position there with a, with a stipend and so forth. So we brought in um, Coach Sapri from – it was teaching in Manor, but he was coaching over at Euclid High School. But the entire staff then was the same. And, and we made some changes and some small modifications, but – kind of the, the overarching program has not changed too much since since going through it in that transition from, between Coach Tripp and myself. And, and, and those are these assistant coaches are the ones that are, are the, the foundation of being able to, to teach everything, to be able to hold those high expectations and, and being able to, to get the, the communication, get everybody on that same page. We have our program, our, our goals and our mottos and so forth with that, that the assistant coaches are able to get that and they do an unbelievable job of, of teaching the game of football and being there for their kids. And, and that's, that to me is, is, is a huge aspect of, of what we do is that assistant coach role and, and the continuity is, is, is so crucial because unfortunately I can't be able to, to meet with every kid every single day and, right. and they're able to get in those, those position groups and, and, and share that message and what we got to get accomplished and hold those standards. And, and they're able, we're able to, because we've been working together for so long, um, we're speaking the same language and, and being able to get it communicated to kids is, is so crucial. And, and these guys make so many sacrifices and they work so hard. Once we get going into the season, we go seven days a week and they really put the, the commitment in to be able to put our kids in the best possible spot. I mean, we were in there from about 12.30 to 5.30 today and just getting the game plans done and everything like that so that the kids can, right when we show up on Monday afternoon, the kids are being able to, boom, hit the practice field, know exactly what Strong's was going to give us this week, and they're going to know what the game plan is, offense, defense, and special teams, and, and that's a huge testament to our assistant coaches. What, what about – because, you know, when we're out and, and we're, we're on the sidelines and we're covering these games, um, we, we hear a lot of it. What about, like, like uh, you know – from what you do you ever hear the outside noise like you know parents um you know heckling you from the stands or or questioning your play caller from the stands or and i'm not trying to get you to bad mouth parents but even even you know like if there's a parent that's like you know hey coach why isn't you know my son getting any any pt how do you as a coach Mm -hmm. how how do you approach it how do you deal with that you know i I think number one is i i knew exactly what i signed up for so i always feel bad for my wife, my family, and so forth, or any of our assistant coaches, wives, and families. Because honestly, on especially on game nights, they get the brunt of it. They hear more of it than we as coaches because it's, one, we're focusing on what's going on in the crowd noise and so forth. And, and trust me, I know that there's – no matter what decision we do, there's always going to be people that are, are never going to be happy and we're never going to be able to please everybody. But I think, number one, is we want to be able to make sure that – 
we have clear expectations and, and we have great communication with our kids because we will meet the way we set up our summer schedules. We go a mini camp in June, a mini camp in July. So we go five in June, five in July to be able to do our 10 coaching days. We'll meet with our kids. Every single assistant coach will meet with his position group in June, in July. So they know exactly where they're at, where their strengths, where their weaknesses are, where they're at on the depth chart, what they have to do to move up, what they have to do to maintain where they're, if they're a starter or a two or three, whatever it might be. Then we'll meet two to three times in August as well. Too. So the kids have a very clear idea of where they're at. And then really I start any parent playing time type of deal of has your son met with the position coach? Mm -hmm. Because if they haven't met that visit with the position coach, I want them to start there because to me, that's part of the maturation process and, and growing from a teenager into an, a, a young male and an adult and getting into that aspect of being able to, to have a real and honest conversation. So you know exactly what you need to do to be able to get better and or why someone might be playing ahead of you. And I think ultimately it comes down to is just, we want to do what's best for our kids in our program and be able to, yeah, we want to win every single game on game nights on Friday nights, but we want to make sure we're, we're developing young men, but in, in clear communication is so crucial in that aspect of, of the playing time and, and making sure that the kids are, are valued and, and they're wanted within the program. I think that's amazing. How, how important would you say is transparency, not only in the part of, between you as coaching staff, but between you and the players and even with the parents and them understanding like what your role is, not only as a coach during the game, but also off the field. Absolutely. It's huge. And that's the key. And because when you tend to see issues, it comes from a lack of communication or a misinterpretation of something. And, and we'll go through, we do a parent meeting in, in late May, right before we get started with our summer program. And, and we lay out what our expectations, we go kind of over what our team rules are. We go over the communication process, playing time process and all that. Just so everybody, all parents, players, coaches are on the same page. And, it, and it's very clear and concise with that, just because when you do have issues, that's where it can come from. Now, being at Minner, uh, there are, I'm sure, you know, college programs that are there a lot recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, how much of an active role do you play in someone that's going through that process? Do you kind of step back and let them and the parents handle it? How much input do you have? Well, let's say a, a, a player like a Brand Vernon. How, how much input do you have in his recruitment uh, or do you not really have any, any, any at all? You know, you, you, you try to, one, try to educate uh, both the student athlete and the parents. And so every off season, um, January, February, early March, before it gets going again um, in that spring recruiting period is, is any player that has any ambitions or dreams or wants to know a little bit about the recruiting process. We have, I hold a recruiting meeting and break down the entire recruitment process because football is, is different than other sports with it. It's still kind of run through the high school. There's not AU basketball or club soccer, um, those type of deals that you have. And so what wanted, what my ultimate goal is, is to be able to educate of being able to trying to find the right fit for both the football aspect, the academic piece and the social, because, because those three things are, are, are really crucial. And, and we're fortunate because we have some great players and a great history at Mentor High School with the program. And, and we have usually anywhere between in a because usually you, you get your two you get your winter recruiting cycle and your spring recruiting cycle we'll have and we're probably between about 55 to 80 coaches come through when it's division one two and three so there's there's a wide range and that becomes a huge part of my job as the head football coach of, of trying to get the kids information out there trying to have real and honest conversations of kind of where we see a kid will fit just because you get that kid that's a five foot three 150 pound nose tackle that thinks he's a division one kid it's like all right let's 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 back that down a little bit. let's have some race. conversation yep mm -hmm. <laughs> just because you don't want to you don't want to create the the false narrative with it right. and i think but well, it, it's twofold i think it might hurt initially but i think parents and families will value that honest feedback mm -hmm. um, with it but then too i want it to be when a college coach calls i want to give that honest opinion not just oversell it and, and just give a, a fallacy of where a kid might be at just to say oh we're pumping this kid out this this and this I want to make sure that it, it fits for the kid and it's the right fit in those three pieces I talked about in terms of the academic the social and the, and the athletic part too absolutely now when it's when it's time for you to kind of just get away from football and, and being a, a teacher and all that 
what do you do to make time for Coach Bray? What do you do to just kind of get away, decompress, and, and kind of have time to yourself? I think number one is just, especially now with having almost two year old daughters, is being able to take that time because it's it's a crazy world right now, just in terms of busy schedule and so forth. Last week we had parent teacher conferences and we had middle school night. So I really didn't get to see my daughter from was it Tuesday nights until Friday morning almost it was because just because we had a schedule actually no Saturday morning because um, just we I wasn't I'm not I'm gone by the time she wakes up most mornings and so I don't get to see her so really any free time that I have especially right now is, is just spending time with Peyton and just seeing how she's grown and developing and, and just grow every single day so just really just spending time with with family and friends and just kind of getting away nothing too crazy i don't have many hobbies i'm a i'm a terrible golfer i i don't do any <laughs> of that type of stuff so it's i i'm i'm kind of a boring person i guess <laughs> <laughs> um all right uh okay real, real quick two two more um sure. worst locker room music you've ever heard what, what's the worst music song you Ooh. heard in a locker room oh um yeah, that's a hard one. I, I I guess the stuff I I can't understand, or, or yeah. you just hear every curse word known to man on it, and that's when I got to go in the locker room and be like, "All right, next song, here we go." There don't don't be. don't fall for the bait, coach. That was a bait question. He, <laughs> he he's an old school hip hop, so he wanted that question to come up. I knew that's what it was. Don't 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 do that. Don't do that. I'm just saying, you know, don't handle me for like Run DMC. All right, uh, okay. So we'll, we'll get you out of here on this one, coach. Serious question. Oh, good. At the end of the day, um, what do you want your legacy to be? When it's all said and done and, 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 and Matt Gray walks away from coaching at Mentor, what do you want them to say about you? No, I, I think, number one, it's it's about – I hope that all of our players and my players, whether it was when I was offensive line coach, offense coordinator, to now head coaches – I would do everything and in, in be in, our, in my player's corner and in their back, and I would do everything in my power to be able to make sure that they're successful in all aspects, from the academic side, from the social side to the football. I'd, I'd do everything in my power for our guys. And, and at times it takes some tough love and some tough, tough coaching. Sometimes you got to be there in their corner and be able to bump them up and, and that type of deal. So I think that to me is, is what I would want my impact to be. It has nothing to do with wins and losses, I think, is, is the kids – will truly understand that that's when the wins and losses take care of themselves for that. So I think just having the, our players to know and understand that I do anything, I'm always in their corner and will do anything in their power to be able to help them be successful in every aspect. You know, I think I can speak for the whole crew here, uh, Coach, when I, when I say thank you uh, for your support of what we're doing here and really the whole Minter family. Uh, you guys have, have been supportive of, of us since day one, and we really appreciate it. And, um, you know, again, we, we can't thank you enough for coming through, taking time to uh, to come on tonight. Really, really appreciate you coming through and talking to us. Absolutely. No, I appreciate you guys having me on here tonight and, and really appreciate what you guys do for high school sports because I think it's absolutely awesome. And it's such a great piece of, of high school athletics of, of what it can do for the young people and, and be able to get, get it out there and get it to the communities and people see the positives. And that's a huge part of what you guys do. So we really appreciate that. And, and your guys support of our football program and our athletics and, and men are in general. And we really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. I'm sure we'll talk to you again down the road. Perfect. Sounds good. Appreciate uh, it. Take care.